Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Shield Classroom. My name is Ram and I'm a cybersecurity specialist at Manage Engine. Thank you so much for joining me here today. In today's episode, we'll be talking about the seven cybersecurity trends in 2023. Now, these are cybersecurity trends that we can hope to look forward to in 2023. And as you can see, I've got the seven different points here. We've got number one, ransom cloud attacks. Then we've got IoT attacks. Point number three is supply chain attacks. Then we've got operational technology attacks, that is attacks on OT. Then you've got attacks against mobile devices. As you know, mobile devices have very much proliferated the world now. Then while these five points here uh, talk about the different kinds of attacks that we are exposed to in 2023 and beyond, point number six and seven talk about the defense mechanisms that companies can adopt. So a lot of companies are nowadays talking about zero trust security. So that's point number six. And then finally, point number seven, how you can actually integrate a SIM solution with SOAR or security orchestration automation and response. So these are the seven trends in 2023 that we can look forward to. So let's go through each of these trends one by one. First up, ransom cloud attacks. Now, everyone knows what ransomware is. It's probably the most dangerous threat for organizations right now. A lot of people are talking about ransomware. But what we have seen over the last couple of years, and we'll be seeing more of in 2023, is what is known as a ransom cloud attack. So think of this as ransomware, but in the cloud environment. Now, many of you would know that most organizations have already migrated to the cloud or in the process of migrating to the cloud. So attackers also know this, and that is why they are actually deploying ransomware in the cloud. You can still have a situation where the initial access into the company's network happens through the on-premises network. So it could be brute forcing or it could be exploiting a weakness in the RDP connection. It could be even be a phishing attack. That could be the initial access vector. But once the attacker gets into the network, they would probably escalate privileges, they will move laterally, and ultimately they will find their way into the cloud infrastructure and then deploy ransomware. So this is what makes it a ransom cloud attack. I'll give you an example. Uh, there could be a case where, or a scenario where uh, there is an email in the cloud and then uh, a victim, they wouldn't know at that point of time what they have been hit with, but they would actually see all of their emails be infected. The subject line would still remain as is so that the victim would still know what uh, email was actually infected but it would contain infected. The word infected would be there in the subject line. And all that they wouldn't be able to have access to the emails. And then they would have yet another email from the attacker which says that all of your emails have been encrypted. You've got to pay a ransom to get all of your files back or all of the data back. So that's a very good example of a ransom cloud attack. And we'll be seeing more of this in 2023. Point number two, IoT. IoT is Internet of Things. And many organizations are making use of IoT devices now. And that has just drastically expanded the attack surface. Uh, while the attack surface was not so much earlier, now because of IoT coming in, there are, the vulnerabilities are so much more. You also have the case of IOMT devices. So the IoT-based attacks are especially a threat for healthcare organizations because they use IOMT devices. And you could have a situation where there is wearable technology or even in an operating room of a hospital, you have an IOMT device and an attacker gets in uh, into the network and they're able to manipulate it. Or they could use that as a stepping stone to further burrow deeper into the network. So IoT attacks, IoT threats are point number two. Then you've got supply chain attacks. Now, how does a normal supply chain look like? Well, it looks like this. You've got different value chains, right? So you could, you could actually have a manufacturer, and then you could have a distributor, you could have a retailer, and then finally you have the end user, right? So this is a, a usual supply chain. And in a way, it's not just a supply chain, it is also a value chain. So every link of the chain, the value is usually increasing for the user. But then let's say that the retailer organization is well protected. They have the necessary solutions in place, security solutions in place. But maybe the distributor is the weak link. And the attacker gets in over here. 
they're able to get in, the attacker gets in, and they're able to compromise the distributor. But because there is inherent trust between the distributor and the retailer part of the value chain, they are able to actually get into the retailer's network. Now, this has happened in the past also, but we'll be seeing more and more uh, cases of supply chain attacks in 2023 and beyond. Then uh, point number four, you have attacks on the operational technology. Now, many a time we're always focusing on the IT side of things, the information technology. This is where you're talking about your network devices, everything that is you know, there in the network itself, the usual workstations and so on. But with operational technology, we are talking about things that are slightly more complicated. So what I mean here is ICS, uh, industrial control systems, or building automation systems. You could even have the physical security devices like IP CCTV cameras added into the mix. Now, when these devices are compromised, it could actually spell disaster for a company. I'll give you an example here. Let's say that it's a particular nation that we are talking about, and this nation, uh, what they've implemented is some sort of a water system, and the attacker gets in and manipulates the water system and is able to regulate the acidity level of the water. Now, this could have consequences for the entire nation, right? So this is what makes attacks on operational technology so dangerous. Point number five, attacks against mobile devices. Now, everyone knows that mobile devices have proliferated. Everybody uses mobile devices now, and attackers know this. That is why they are going after mobile devices. Uh, you could have cases of phishing, man-in-the-middle uh, attacks, and so on, to actually take down the mobile technology. So yes, these are the five main attacks that we'll see in 2023. Point number six and seven, yes, we're going to be talking about uh, the solutions that organizations are actually adopting today. First up, we have a, the, the zero trust network or zero trust security, where the philosophy is actually always verify and never trust. Like I said, it's more of a philosophy than a solution or a product. It's a mindset. So nowadays, what organizations are talking about is the fact that just because a user has authenticated once into the network, or for that matter, a device is trusted once into the network, it doesn't mean that that trust will always remain. We've got to constantly evaluate the trust or the risk levels of the user. And as soon as the risk level of the user or the device goes beyond a certain threshold, we've got to do something about it. Perhaps the user has got to be logged off, or there's got to be some adaptive authentication in place, or they have to re-authenticate them themselves. Something of this sort. That is what zero trust is all about. Again, identity is going to be at the center of the zero trust architecture. If not that, at least a lot of organizations are implementing micro-segmentation, where undue traffic uh, is not allowed, is actually disallowed between uh, different parts of the network. Finally, we have what is called this, SOAR solutions. That is point number seven here. SOAR stands for Security Orchestration Automation and Response. And nowadays, it has become an integral part of your SIM solution, that is Security Information Events Management. You've got to have a, the capability within your SIM to automate certain things. For example, the whole point about threat detection. If you can actually get in machine learning algorithms into your SIM and you're able to detect anomalies within the network proactively, uh, all the while uh, monitoring the risk levels of users, that is one form of automation. Um, likewise, orchestration, you've got to be able to look at logs that are generated from multiple sources, bring it all together, and then do the analysis. And then, of course, response. You should also have the ability to respond to the threat. It's not just about threat detection, but also going full circle and responding to the threat effectively so that you can mitigate it. So that is another thing that a lot of organizations are talking about and we'll see more and more of in 2023. So yes, there you have it. These are the seven things that we can look forward to, trends in 2023. Uh, I hope you found this valuable and until next time, please take care.